<laughs> hey guys, this is Ben McGee. I wanted to go ahead and give an overview of Active Directory. If you're not familiar with what a directory is, it's a hierarchical structure that stores information about objects that are on the network. In a directory service like Active Directory, it uses these things called domain services, and it provides us ways that we can store directory data and make that data available to anyone that's using the network like users or administrators. And in our case, directory services, one of the most popular is Active Directory. It stores things and information about user accounts like names. It also stores passwords, phone, phone numbers, and a whole bunch of other things. One way that it was taught to me many, many years ago was it's kind of like the white pages of how a network is stored. Basically, you can look up objects by a number of different ways, and those different ways allow us to provide information about Active Directory objects. If you're not familiar with Active Directory, watch this video, and you should be able to get a good understanding of it. So directory services give us a great way to organize information. We can organize it into different groups within directory services um, with Active Directory, and then integrate it into an, a hierarchical approach using structure, organizational objects, and uh, organizational units. And within those organizational units, we can store objects like users, computers, or groups. And with those users, computers, and group objects, we can group those into these things called domains. And with domains, we're able to give the system administrators a way to centrally manage and control access to any objects that are in those domains. Any user can find resources that they are privy, privy to have access to. And a schema is how we control things within Active Directory. So it's very important. It's LDAP compatible, Microsoft, um, staple product or, or benchmark product is Active Directory, and it's very, very widely used in the modern day networks. If you're not familiar with it, it uses uh, lightweight directory access protocol and gives us Kerberos authentication for single sign-on. It allows us to uh, have consistent and persistent authentication a mechanism between users and servers on the network. And one of the cool things about it, it also will manage any domain name services, DNS, um, within the Active Directory, and it requires DNS to be set up um, properly. So what's the logical structure of it? Well, they, they came up with a bunch of different um, nomenclature for the ways that we can set up the organization of a network and if you're not familiar with let's enumerate it but one of the ways is we create a forest at the top and inside a forest there are a bunch of different trees and inside of the trees we can create these domains and domains give us access to any resources that we're allowed to have access to it uses built-in trust relationships, transitive trust relationships within Active Directory, and groups them by these hierarchical models of forests, trees, and domains. If you're not familiar with domain, it's really just a logical grouping of users, computers, peripheral devices, network services, and security settings. And it gives us a centrally managed network environment where authentication is governed by a domain. For our case here, our domain would be cyberprotects.com. So anything within cyberprotects.com, we can manage however we want if we are a domain administrator. Underneath the domain, we can have child domains, which are subdomains. And uh, so it would be something like training.cyberprotects.com would be a, a child domain or subdomain. And it gives us a way that we can um, manage the parent domain as well as these child domains underneath for each one of these um, uh, different 
trees with the roots accordingly. So it's it's kind of a neat way to to group everything together. The tree consists of one or more domains within Active Directory, and the forest gives us transitive trust and explicit trust. So when your uh, new domain joins an existing tree, it automatically trusts all existing domains in the tree. It can be made up of one or more trees, and it uses any type of just disjointed namespaces, especially when two companies merge or are using a federation trust between the organizations. One of the coolest things about Active Directory is the ability to push these things called group policy. So anything inside the domain allows us as administrators to centrally manage configuration for any OS or apps or user settings within the Active Directory infrastructure. So the Active Directory really is the omnipotent one that controls the directory. And then these group policies are ways that we can go in and control what's happening on the environment. We can logically put things into groups, and those can be systems, those can be security, any software installation, scripts, folders, um, any of these group policy objects or GPOs within Active Directory give us a way that we can go and centrally manage and assign rights and permissions to different objects within the domain. And it's kind of neat because if you've never seen it before, group policies are applied in the above order. So if you look at what we have here, local is overridden by site, site is overridden by domain, and then domain is overridden by OU or anything in the tree or the forest. So um, it, it, it works in that particular way. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, you, you actually have a, a management console that you can go in and, and look at the domain and from the domain be able to push those group policy objects to lock it down as best as you possibly can. Really a, a, a very, very easy way to uh, centrally manage the domain. Um, the computer policies, uh, th this is part of the group policy. So um, this is on the computer. So if we're applying computer policies, it would be to the computer. And um, it doesn't matter the specific user. As soon as the computer is turned on, it's applied. And it applies to the domain and non-domain computer. So it, it doesn't matter if it's on the domain or not on the domain. These types of policies, which are specific or resonant on the computer, are important to be able to lock it down per the machine or device. The user is relevant to the user regardless of a computer, where we just talked about the computer policy being um, specific to the computer user policies are specific to the user and it really makes sense if you think about it um, you can apply it as soon as they log in or log off and um, it really gives you a, an easy way to um, enable or disable different group policy objects within uh, the active directory plugin and last but not least here the local policies uh, gives us a way that we can determine any type of um, issue that we need to, to view like computer configuration or user configuration on the local machine. Things like logs of successful attempts, failed logins, failed attempts, um, any type of user rights assignment or security options, um, and renaming of admin or guest accounts. If we want to prevent access to drives or maybe enforce the various different types of uh, authentication mechanisms or encryption, we would do that at the local policy, um, or we could do it at the local policy for some security options to be able to lock it down a little bit more. So this is just a basic overview of Active Directory. We get a lot of questions on how it all ties together. Um, they, so in a Microsoft Windows domain, Active Directory manages everything in the domain and it puts it into the domain controllers and allows you to manage, administer, and share anything on the network.